Now, the first part of DRARE, or DRARE, if you like, is defining the problem, looking at the demand. Now, we could have left this one off. We could have left this D off and had a nice handy little acronym of RARE for the, for the problem solving model, but it's really important that you look at the demand right at the outset because it can save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache if what you work out is that the problem doesn't really exist. This happens quite often, it's where you get a complaint about something and then you go and investigate and you look a bit closer before you start taking any action, you find there isn't actually a problem there in the first place. Uh, a great example I remember from my policing days was a complaint from an individual that there were people causing trouble in his street. And we could have just accepted that and maybe put more police patrols down the street or logged the calls, etc. Um, but when we went and actually looked at the problem, what we realized is that there wasn't that much trouble in his street at all. He just wanted CCTV in his street to stop his house being burgled. So he thought, the more I called the police, the more they were likely to give me CCTV. What I will say is it's really, really, really important to establish whether demand is worthy of putting lots of work into it. Because there are some people who are just intolerant and, and they'll moan about something, even if no one else in their area uh, finds it a problem. And the same at a workplace. You may find one person is extremely intolerant of one thing but it doesn't affect any other workers. Um, and you may have to then be a little bit concessionary maybe, do something to, to help that particular worker to have a more pleasant work experience, but without necessarily inconveniencing all the other people who are quite happy with working the way they are. This does happen sometimes, and you need some good people management skills, but it's not necessarily a problem that needs a full problem-solving process to tackle. And, and when it comes to defining the problem, you should really be able to describe your problem in one single simple sentence if you can't do that you may have more than one problem or you just don't purely you don't properly understand what the problem is if you can't describe your problem in one simple single sentence then you may have more than one problem or you may it may be that you simply don't understand what the problem is um, something that quite frequently used to happen to us is we get a complaint coming into the police and it was something like oh the problem is trouble at the bus station now, that's not a defined problem. It's an indication that there's an issue that needs to be resolved, but trouble at the bus station is too nebulous. It doesn't mean anything. And of course, once we went and looked and did our research, what we found was there were actually a number of problems at the bus station. There were problems of graffiti. There were problems of litter. There were problems of um, gangs of people hanging around, particularly groups of youths who were just basically using it as a shelter because it was out of the rain and they'd hang around. Sometimes they'd be a bit drunk, a bit leery. There was problems with... Um, uh, passengers getting angry and sometimes assaulting staff over the fact that the, tr the buses were running late or or just general intolerance. Um, there were all sorts of issues that revolved around that bus station, but it wasn't enough to say trouble at the bus station. You had to pick the problem apart and work out what the individual problems were. And each one of those would then need its own separately designed solution. So the first stage is to actually look at your problem, figure out exactly what the problem is by asking questions and working out whether the demand is strong enough that you need to give it the attention. 